cloudy nights. No, 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 not the astrophotography messaging board. I'm talking about actual cloudy nights, the bane for every astronomer and astrophotographer. Have you ever had that moment where you're eager and excited to go outside for a night of observing or imaging, only to have the heavens close the curtain at the last second? It can be a major bummer. So what can we do about this? Does this mean we have to call it a night, throw in the towel, and just sit at home with nothing to do? Not necessarily. In this video, I'm going to share with you five things that I personally do as an astrophotographer when the weather is not in my favor. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, test your new equipment. I know you were pretty excited to test out that new telescope to gather your first light, only to have clouds come in at the last moment. But you still can test your telescope as well as any type of equipment in the comfort of your own home. For example, try practicing setting up and then taking down your mount to know how all the parts work. Make sure that your guide scope profile is set up correctly within PhD2. Practice putting together your imaging train and make sure that all of the necessary drivers for your cameras and your image acquisition software are successfully installed. When you practice all of these stains in the warmth of your own home, since you already know the ins and outs of all of your equipment, you can significantly reduce the amount of setup time for when you do this out in the field, especially when it's cold and dark outside. Number two, shoot your calibration frames. Whenever I complete my imaging session, the only calibration frame that I shoot are my flat frames, as they depend on the configuration of the focus of my telescope. As for the remaining calibration frames, my darks and my biases, I tend to shoot those on cloudy nights. So whenever I see in the forecast there's a cloudy night that's roughly the same temperature as when I shot my light frames, I just simply take the camera to my back porch, set it up, put the cap on front, let the camera cool down to the ambient temperature, and then shoot my darks and biases from there, all from the comfort of my own home. Number three, read reference books. There's a vast plethora of information you can find about astronomy, and astrophotography on the internet. However, personally, I like to keep a few hard copies of books as a reference whenever I need to. So if you're looking for some books to add to your library, here's a few that I would recommend. First up, we have Deep Sky Wonders by Sue French of Sky and Telescope Magazine. Organized by season, the book offers readers 100 in-depth tours of the deep sky and a range of challenging objects that will encourage observers and imagers to test the limits of their equipment and skills. The book offers hundreds of full-color images, descriptions of double and variable stars, star clusters, nebulae, and galaxies as well as historical and scientific background information on the objects. Up next, we have the Deep Sky Imaging Primer by Charles Bracken. In this second edition, it covers everything you need to know about how to capture stunning images of deep sky objects with a DSLR, 
CCD or CMOS camera. It covers the fundamental concepts of imaging and their impact on the final image, how to pick a telescope and camera, how to get set up and take the images, when and where to find the best objects in the night sky, how to process images using Photoshop and PixInsight, and an example of image processing from start to finish. And lastly, I have Planetary Astronomy by Christoph Pellier and his colleagues at Axlion Astronomy. This book is a comprehensive study of planetary observing and imaging. It will show you how to select the correct telescope for planetary work, as well as how to use the correct eyepieces for observing and the correct cameras for imaging. And it also covers the softwares of Otto Stackert and Registax for post-production. And there's also a studying section that shows how you as an amateur astronomer or astrophotographer can help the professional community in working on various projects that could potentially lead to future discoveries. Number four, watch astrophotography YouTube channels. I wouldn't be where I am today in my astrophotography journey without the help and support from the astrophotography community here on YouTube. There's several excellent channels that I watch that provide some useful tips and information on the subject. Now, if I were to list every single channel that I watch, this video would be way too long. So I've selected a handful at random and in no particular order. So if you're looking for some great astrophotography YouTube content, these ladies and gentlemen are a few that I would recommend. And since I'm also a NASA engineer, I enjoy learning about the scientific knowledge of the things that I photograph in deep space and the solar system. And these following channels do a great job at presenting that information. Number five, reprocess your old data. 
Have you ever looked at your previous photos and thought about what you could have done differently in your post-production? Well, now is your chance to reprocess your old data. You could try different things such as experimenting with different narrowband combinations or apply a new technique in your noise reduction and color balance. The possibilities are practically endless and you'd be quite amazed at the results you'd be able to achieve. And it's a great way to maintain your proficiency in the image editing software of your choice. So that was five things that I do as an astrophotographer during cloudy nights. What are some of the things you like to do when the weather is not in your favor? Let me know about it in the comment section down below. My name is Kwesi Akwa. Thank you for watching Astro Park. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.